God's name is Yahuwah, or Yahweh, or Elohim. Jesus' name is Yahusha, or Yeshua, or Yahawasha. The Holy Spirit's name is Rahakadesh. These are their original Hebrew names. I come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. John 5, 43. Welcome all. I love you all. We must, I repeat, we must keep the Sabbath day. We must return to it. God is not joking about it. Exodus 31, 12 through 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you, Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Kingdom Blessings, Chapter 2 We thank and praise you, Most High God, for the privilege to fellowship and speak to your children today and we know how important it is for us to have this tremendous opportunity. We thank you for Yahusha. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for our creativity from you. We thank you for everything. We love you, we worship you, we praise you, and we thank you in Yahushua's name, I pray. Welcome to the turnpike of faith. Know that faith, mighty faith, the promise sees and looks to God alone, laughs at impossibilities and cries it shall be done. Your faith and belief are the very scales upon which the portions of what you want will be weighed out to you. Now true creativity, true creativeness is finding new possibilities in old situations. We're not sent to try and program you differently than you've already been programmed. We are sent to share information, and we have prayed that you be blessed. We left off in the beginning. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let me just pause a minute, because that particular verse that you have there is not really correct in its translation. The words here are written from the Hebrew text. The Hebrew manuscript does not have the word the in that sentence. They put that word the in that sentence because, listen, they put that word the in the sentence so that we could in English properly understand the statement. But when you put the the in that sentence, it disturbs the meaning a little bit. In the manuscript, it's written like this in Hebrew. In beginnings, Elohim bara, the heavens and the earth. Simply put, in beginnings, God created heavens and the earth. There's no the in the sentence. Because when you put the word the in a sentence, it gives the sentence a subject. It gives the subject of the sentence 
a reference and a time and a location. And God refused to put the the in the sentence and made sure Moses didn't because when you put the the in the sentence, it meant that God began when the beginning began. But you see, God says, no, I didn't begin when the beginning began. I began the beginning. That's very important because we don't want to confuse the beginning with God. See, the beginning began when God began it. See, God is bigger. Listen, God is bigger than the beginning. Let me say it again. God is bigger than the beginning. He is before Genesis. Matter of a fact, you know the word Genesis means beginnings. God began the whole thing. God started, start. That means before anything was, God is. Let me say that again. Before anything was, God is. You can put it this way. The Bible says in John 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now it says all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Hebrews 11, 3 says, through faith we understand that the world that's the heavens and the earth were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means everything, all things were made by God. So nothing really was made until God made it. Which means everything that has began, God began it. So before God began it, it wasn't. So therefore, everything that is, was in God. Because there was a time when there was nothing but God. So there was nothing except God before anything came to be because God made everything. So before God made everything, there was nothing but God. That means if you met God before anything was, standing on nothing, by the corner of nowhere, and if you were to walk up to him, up on him, and shake his hand, you would be shaking hands with everything, but you wouldn't have known it because everything was in God. That's why when you read scriptures like Psalm 91, you should probably read that sometime in Psalm 92. It says, for the earth and the mountains was given birth by God. That means that God was like pregnant with the universe and the earth. And he, poof, gave birth to the universe and the earth. 500 million planets and stars and galaxies, poof. He began to release from himself ions of space, of millions of planets and solar systems. They all came out of God. That's why he's the source of creation. So God is the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. God started start and he ended start. So God is the alpha and the omega because he's outside the alpha. He started the alpha. God is in eternity. And then he started time. And time is when Genesis began. And then God finished time. That's when it's all consummated by God. Verse 1, so God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now listen, verse 2 is a problem in the Bible because we've got three problems taking place in verse 2. That's not like God. Let's read it again. The earth was without form and void and darkness 
was upon the face of the deep. Three things I found in verse 2 that we must kind of isolate. There was disorder. Write that down. Without form means was no formal order. That's what the word implies in the Hebrew language. The earth was without formal order. Everything was on the earth, but nothing was in its proper order. This is very important. Important. This is a very important statement. That means everything was out of order. Everything was present, but out of order. That means everything was out of order. Everything was present, but out of order. And if you study the rest of the chapter, you will see that's true. The Bible says that the clouds had fallen to the ground. The firmament had come to the earth. The water had gone over the dry land. The dry ground was under the water, and the fish and the animals and the trees were trapped in the earth under the water, which was trapped by the earth under the dry land. And there was the clouds on the ground, and there was the firmament, which the atmosphere had collapsed So everything was in the wrong place, out of order. The second thing wrong is void. Void means chaos and confusion. The earth was out of order and it was confused. There was confusion everywhere, chaos. Number three, the third thing wrong in verse two, write this down, is darkness. This word darkness is a very important word because the word darkness in the Hebrew language means ignorance or absence of purpose. Darkness, absence of purpose or ignorance. We would say absence of knowledge. That means nothing that was present in the earth knew where it was supposed to be. It was ignorant of its purpose. The clouds didn't know what they were there for. The sea didn't know what it was there for. The land didn't know what it was there for. The trees didn't know what they were there for. Everything was confused. It didn't have knowledge of its purpose. God caused that darkness. God caused that darkness. Now remember, the Hebrew word for darkness is the word ignorance. The word ignorance is translated absence of knowledge of purpose. Absence of knowledge of purpose. That means you don't have awareness of why you exist. The word darkness is used all through the Bible, but most have the wrong understanding of it. Most think the Bible is referring to no lights are on, but it is really referring to ignorance. So we've got three problems. Look at those things. Let's look at them. Number one is what? Disorder. Number two is what? Confusion. Void. Number three is what? Darkness. Now these three things are wrong with the earth. And we know that God was not involved with this. Let's prove it. The Bible says God does all things decently and in order. So that means when something is out of order, God didn't do it. Why? Because he does all things. How many? All things. That means God doesn't do anything that's not orderly. Look at the stripes on a zebra's back. Look at the way your eyes and your nose is placed in your body. Everything that God does is decent and in order. Look at the pebbles on the beautiful flower. They are orderly and decently designed. God does nothing without design. Everything is decent and in order. Even his relationship to earth is orderly. God and the word and the spirit would never be on earth at the same time. 
Because God is a God of order. Sorry about that. I went over into the deep end for a minute. But listen. God and the Word and the Spirit would never be on earth at the same time. See, if God, the Holy Spirit, and Yahushua were on earth at the same time, you wouldn't know who to listen to. That's why they are never on earth at the same time, because the Father created the heavens and the earth through the Word, by the power of the Spirit. But when it was time to redeem earth, He sent the Word, and the Word does His work, and the Word says, I will go away, but there's another one coming, and he's going to do his work. But I'm going to sit while he's working because I can't come down there while he's working because he's going to speak for me. Do you understand? He's a God of order. So we know that God is not responsible then for this first thing in verse 2. Now, if God is not responsible for disorder, then I wonder who is. Wow. We know who is. When something is out of order, the devil is at work. Matter of fact, the number one problem in the Bible begins right there with that second verse. The number one problem of disorder. It is still the number one problem today. When you have women trying to be men and men trying to be women, you have disorder. I mean, it's just not orderly. When you have children running the house, you're out of order. There's something wrong there. When you got the deacon trying to run the pastor's life, that's out of order. Just look around the world. It's the cause of all of our problems. Now, why is this order so important? Because it leads to the second problem. It's the problem of what? Confusion or chaos. Chaos is a result of disorder. Write that down. When things are out of order, there is confusion. Now, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. That means God never creates confusion. Where there's confusion, it's not God at work. So we know God didn't do that one either. Do you know what causes confusion? Disorder. If you are confused, just stop and check where everything is you'll probably discover that everything is out of place. If you're financially confused, you need to stop spending and check where your money is going. You are out of order. Your priorities are wrong. That's why you're broke all the time. You're buying things you don't need and you're spending money on things you can't afford out of order. If your marriage is not working out, don't blame the devil. Stop. Take stock. Something is out of order here. There is disorder. If there is confusion in your relationship, then there is disorder. You have violated a principle of order. What's the third thing that's wrong? Darkness. The Bible says God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. I mean, that is a powerful statement. Where there is no darkness at all. Where there's darkness, it ain't God. This is something you must know. God is never ignorant of anything. Listen. When you read the Bible, read it carefully. You got to read this Bible carefully. Remember the Hebrew word for knowledge is light. And the Hebrew word for ignorance is darkness. That's why Satan is called the prince of darkness. And Yahushua is called the light of the world. 
It doesn't mean that Satan walks around in dark alleys. That's why the scripture says, night and day are the same to God. This has nothing to do with the absence of illumination. It has to do with ignorance. When the Bible says Satan is the prince of darkness, write that word prince down, please. Let's look at that word. The word prince is all through the Bible. It's from the word principality. And the word prince means first law. First law. Write that down, please. The rules. Listen. First law. The word prince means first law. That means Satan is the prince of what? Darkness. He's what? The first to rule by ignorance. He rules by ignorance. If you are ignorant, he will run your life. That means your ignorance will run your life. That means that your ignorance is your greatest weakness. That's the area of your life that Satan is running and running and running. The area where you are ignorant. We don't understand how he is running our lives, but he is running our lives. I don't care how much you scream and shout and speak in tongues. If you are stupid, Satan is going to run your life. If you are ignorant, he is going to run your life. He is going to take away your health. He is going to take away your finances. He is going to take away your marriage. He is going to destroy your children. He is going to destroy your ministry. He is going to destroy your business because you are ignorant. That is why when you read the book of Hosea, God is explaining to Hosea why the whole city is falling apart. He's explaining why the church is a wreck. He's explaining why everything is in disarray. He's explaining why there's crime in the city. When and if you read Hosea chapter 4, and you read the three chapters before that, You'll find all the problems in New York, Los Angeles, in any major city in these United States. In chapter 1, 2, and 3, you'll find there's crime, there's violence, there's killings, there's divorce, there's broken homes, there's murders. Everything you can think about to destroy a society is in chapter 1, 2, and 3. But when you reach chapter 4, Hosea says, Lord, tell me why it's like this. And God answers him in verse 6. And what does God say? Basically, God says, my people are being destroyed, not because of the devil, not because of demons. Uh-oh. Not because of sin. My people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, whenever we have problems, these are the three things we blame our problems on. The devil, the demons, and sin. Listen, the Bible is saying to you, if you have been destroyed in any part of your life, that's the area of ignorance. Wherever you are being destroyed in your life, that's the area of ignorance. You need more knowledge in that area. So if you are being destroyed in your finances, you need prayer for your finances. You need more knowledge about your finances. And we've got to fix this, see. A lot of folks come to the altar and say, Pastor, pray for me. I am really having financial problems. And some of the pastors are so lame in this area that they pray for them about their finances. If someone comes to me with their financial problems and asks for prayer about their finances, I don't pray for them about that. No, they don't really need prayer for finances. Prayer does not transfer knowledge to anyone. Matter of a fact, you are just sealing the ignorance when you pray for their financing. 
You need to be honest with them and say, look, you need to go to the bookstore and buy a good book on budgeting. Pick up a good tape or book on how to organize your finances and spend time with that book or tape until you really understand. Learn how to keep your finances in your household and stop living above your means. Stop buying things you can't afford. Stop trying to buy a car you can't put gas in. Stop it. Because if you can't be faithful with a little, oh, why, oh, why should God give you more to waste? Ignorance is our greatest enemy. Your marriage is not working out. What do you do? You run to the prayer line. See, all these years, your marriage is still a mess. All that prayer you received you still got divorced because it wasn't prayer you needed. You missed it. My people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means you need to go to the store and find a good book on relationships. Learn how to live with a man if you're a woman. Study how to live with a woman if you're a man. Learn how to live with people. Learn how to talk. Learn how to have proper sexual relationships. How to live with someone properly. You, we need knowledge. I have seen so many people that are so spiritual that they are stupid. I mean stupid. And some even have an anointing in some other area in their lives. I mean stupid though. Your husband wants to have sexual relations with you and you say, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. Holy Ghost, really? You need to go read the Bible again. Yeah, I know. Your husband, your wife wants to talk with you and you're, I'm praying now in the spirit. And your husband or your wife says, I don't want no tongues, baby. We have got to talk. And you say, I can't talk right now. I'm in the Holy Ghost. What? Shut your mouth and talk to that man. Shut your mouth and talk to that woman. The Bible says, he who speaketh in tongues speaketh to God and not man. Sometimes you have to talk to your man. Sometimes you have to talk to your woman. When we have a problem, we have to talk about it. Listen, some churches have a nine-month requirement on marriage seminars before you can get married, and it does work. See, instead of getting the knowledge of marriage or the knowledge in marriage, You go to the prayer closet saying, Lord, that old no good husband of mine and that old no good wife of mine, I want to pray for her or I want to pray for him. Lord, I want to pray for that old no good hard-headed sinner man of mine or that sinner woman of mine. Lord, you know that old dog I married. Yes, Lord. Now, wait a minute. You called the man a dog and you married him. Oh, It takes a dog to know one. I mean, how could you marry a dog? Please hear what you're saying. He ain't no dog. He's your husband. She ain't no dog. She's your wife, brother. And you're just going into your prayer closet praying, Oh, Lord, please change them, Lord. Oh, Lord, please. They're full of demons. I bind those demons in your hooshes. You're praying, and God's just sitting on his throne saying, Please be quiet. And when you finish praying, the Lord says, you know, I never heard a word you were saying because you violated scripture. Didn't I say to you that if you have aught against anyone, you bring your gift to me, to offer it to me, to give it to me, leave it right there and go and make right with them first and then come and pray to me. Uh Uh-oh, it's getting quiet in here. What's happening? You can't hide in the closet from your spouse. The prayer closet is not a hiding place from your responsibility. I will leave that right there. That's for another message another day. But listen, if your marriage is working, it is not magic. It's knowledge. Everybody say ignorance.
God says my people are being destroyed because of darkness. Because Satan rules by darkness. See, he's the ruler of ignorance. Where you are ignorant, that's where he's ruling your life. If you want to have less and less of the interference of Satan, then you must pursue more and more knowledge of truth. That's why I try to encourage people everywhere I go. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Get the information. Research the information. Go to church meetings of someone anointed and listen to good teachings. Get their CDs, get their tapes, or get knowledge from the teachers. You see, many people don't do the things necessary for learning. Many are lazy. Many will not read or hear this message. Many did not come today. You that did come, you that are hearing, are going to be a little wiser than they are. That means that there will be an area in your life that Satan can't deal with you on anymore because you're listening, you're observing, you're digesting, you're receiving light. Yahushua is called the light of the world because he brought the revelation knowledge of God for us so that we can no longer live in darkness. And then he says, you are the light of the world. Tell your neighbor, you are the knowledge of God. That means you are supposed to be letting that light shine everywhere you go, in your workplace, in your gym, in your home. You are to be showing light by the way that you live in the knowledge of revelation. Let's go back to Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed because of what? For lack of knowledge. That means ignorance. Because you have rejected knowledge. Read it. I must also reject you. Underline that. God said you have what? Rejected knowledge. And I must also reject you. That means that knowledge is a choice. And ignorance is a choice. See, you cannot reject what is not available. God is literally saying to you that you do not have to be stupid. And if you are, then you choose to be stupid. How can God say that? Because every time you buy a book and you don't read it, because every time you buy a book and you don't read it, you choose ignorance. Every time you walk by a bookstore and instead of buying a book, you buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. You are rejecting knowledge. Every time you refuse to come to a meeting because you think you know it better or more than the teacher, then you are rejecting knowledge. When you think that you have learned it all and can't anyone teach you anything anymore, you are rejecting knowledge. And God says because you are rejecting knowledge, I am going to reject you. Now, you have been taught that God never rejects people. Well, God disagrees. He says, I do reject people. The word reject here means not to use. God is saying here, if you are ignorant, I will minimize my use for you. I will make sure I use you the least I possibly can. See, the less you know, the less God uses you. When God wants something done, if you are ignorant and you're right there, present, God will travel around the world and find someone who is full of knowledge and bring them there. He will avoid using you because he don't want you to make him ashamed. This is what Paul said so well. Paul said, Timothy, you're excited. You've got zeal. You've got strength. You've got youth but you're stupid. Now, study 
to show yourself what approved of God. So God can approve of you and you won't make God ashamed as a workman. Can anybody hear the knowledge in that? Half of you listening need to repent because you've brought books in your house on a shelf and haven't read a one. With all those books looking at you every day, you've rejected knowledge. Some of you are wanting to be used of God. You pray every day. You pray, oh Lord, use me. Some of you say, Brother Rick, pray for me to be used by God. Listen, God don't use you because you've got prayer. He uses you because you are prepared. You want to attract God? Start studying. You want to attract God? Pursue knowledge. You want to attract God? Get all the knowledge you can. God will use you, my sister. God will use you, my brother. Listen, because God ain't going to use no fool. God will win men by foolishness of preaching, but he won't win them by foolish preaching. Let me say it again because some of you may have missed it. God will win men by the foolishness of preaching, but God won't win them by foolish preaching. Some of you Bible studying students, please listen hard. God didn't say he's going to use foolish preaching to win people. He's going to use the foolishness of preaching. That means he's going to use the method of talking to win people. But you got to be talking sense before God uses you. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your knowledge today. Thank you for letting us understand what you said today. In the name of Yahushua, I pray.